Hello everyone, my name is Hunter, and studying for med school exams, we encounter a lot of chromosomal translocations associated with various pathologies, and honestly, they just look like a bunch of, like, gibberish. Here is a list of all the chromosomal translocations talked about in first aid and pathoma for step one. In this video, I'll first be giving a tabular mnemonic on how to recreate this table. Then, in the second part of the video, I'll be giving specific mnemonics for additional info for each of the pathologies covered in the table. Check the description for timestamps, and let's get this started. So, for part one, the way we're going to set up this table from scratch is that we're first going to need to convert the chromosomal translocation location number pairings into a form that is way easier to recall at exam time. After digging through pathoma and first aid, I found that for each association shown on the right, there's essentially one high yield translocation to know and vice versa, with a minor exception for BALL that I'll get into later. It might be the case that there are other translocations associated with pathologies that might be talked about in in-house exams, but as the most high yield for either in-house or for STEP, these are the one-to-one -one chromosome translocation associations we need to know. But not only are these translocations in the table unique, but it turns out that the difference between the two numbers in each translocation is also unique. So what this means is that if you subtract the bigger number by the smaller number in each pairing, you'll get a number that is unique to the pathology written on the right. And this is what we're going to use to make the table from scratch. So before we can make the table, we first need to make a vertical list of all of the odd numbers 1 through 13. So that's going to be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. Next, at 1, we're going to write a plus 1, and at 5, we're going to write a plus minus 1. And now we're going to draw a line, and we're going to make a new column. So for this new column, it's going to be all the values on the left, but if there is a plus or minus 1, we're going to perform that operation. So the new order is going to be 2, then 3 stays the same, and then we're going to have 4 for 5 minus 1, and 6 for 5 plus 1, and then it's going to be 7, 9, 11, 13, the rest of those down the line. So the new list is 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9, 11, 13. Now with this list, this should match up exactly with the format of our old table, which is exactly what we see here. So once more, the translocation of let's say two numbers x and y is going to be a unique identifier in the form y minus x. So for a translocation between 15 and 17, 17 minus 15 is now equal to 2. 11 and 14, 14 minus 11 is equal to 3. And we're going to go down the line. So now, we don't care about what the translocations actually are. If we see a translocation on our exam, we just subtract the bigger number by the smaller number, and we know what pathology we expect. With this method, the downside is that you won't be able to free recall a translocation, but for the sake of studying, and for things like multiple choice exams, we're able to like cut in half the total amount of numbers we need to know, and we don't have to deal with the repeated 14s, 18s, etc. We just have a unique ID number for each pathology. And so now that we have the left column filled out, it's going to be time to figure out how we fill out the right column. So now we can delete everything we don't need anymore. We draw a new column to the right of our previous column, and we're going to start now with letter associations. So at the top of the list, we're going to be thinking the top of the alphabet, so we're going to put the letter A. And this is going to stand for APL, Acute Promyelocytic Leukemia, which is a subset of AML. So for the next ones, the four lymphomas, so three through seven, we're going to use the sentence men frolic to Burma. So men, man for mantle, cell lymphoma, frolic for follicular, and for the next two, Burma is going to be split up for burr for burkets, and ma for marginal zone, burr and ma. If you get mixed up between whether ma is for marginal or mantle, you can think of marginal as the longer word should get paired with the larger number. Also, if we think of the word men slash man, it has three letters, so it should be paired with the number three. And lastly, for follicular lymphoma, you can think of the word four follicular to prime that follicular lymphoma is associated with four. And so for the last three, I'm going to skip around a bit. For 13, it's going to be the Philadelphia chromosome, which we can think of the 13 original colonies in the U.S. declaring independence in Philadelphia. So Philadelphia, 13. For 11, it's going to be for Ewing sarcoma. And we can think of U11, Ewing's for 11. And to bring it back to nine, it's going to be B-A-L-L. Now, this might be one you have to kind of brute force remember or fill out the rest of the table before getting to. So if you're looking for mnemonics, one way is that you can lengthen the sentence we used earlier for the lymphomas. So men frolic to Burma becomes a man frolic to Burma to ball, as in to play basketball. I'm not a huge fan of that one because it's pretty long, but it does help with a large part of the table since it primes for the B-A-L-L in addition to A being at the top of the table for A-P-L. Additionally, coming from the other direction, going off of Ewing sarcoma, the mnemonic first aid uses for the translocation for Ewing sarcoma is to think of Patrick Ewing, the basketball player, because of his jersey number being 33. And the translocation for Ewing's is T1122, which if you sum together, equals 33, which is Patrick Ewing's jersey number. 
Another similar mnemonic to that is that you can think of B-A-L-L, ball, in association with Patrick Ewing, so ball right before Ewing sarcoma. So a lot of ways to get this table done, but if you can practice getting it in this form of the table, you have a lot of easy associations between the pathologies and whatever chromosomal translocation you're given. So now we can combine it all together to get the final form of the table with the mnemonics used to construct the difference column and the actual associations. So you can compare the Chad, memorize eight different unique numbers to the Virgin, memorize 16, where they all sound really similar. So pick whichever you want, but I'm, I'm a little biased here. What can I say? So to repeat again, the benefits of the tabular method I've described here, if you're given some random translocation, you just have to look at the difference between the two numbers, and then you're easily able to match it to some pathology. And the upside is you just have less content you have to know, and you're able to memorize it kind of spatially like I have here. The downside is, of course, uh, you won't be able to really free recall whatever the translocation is associated with some disease. But with a lot of med school, we're going to have layers and layers of learning and relearning material. And if you think about it, BSing your way through this table here gives us more time to hopefully be better doctors in other aspects of our medical training. So I hope y'all choose to take the Chad route, but even if not, the back end of this video is going to be me going through a bunch of individual mnemonics for each of these associations, semi-tied to the numberings that I have listed here in the difference column. So maybe with some of these additional specific mnemonics, I'll be able to win you over to the Chad side. So let's get that started. So with APL, acute promyelocytic leukemia, the mnemonics are gonna center around the previous name given to this disease. It's the M3 subset of AML. And the M3 AML is gonna be used to figure out some additional associations for this disease. The M and the three A's. So M is gonna be for MPO, myeloperoxidase, positive in these cells. And in particular, the MPO is gonna be present in our rods. So these little stick boys that'll be on histo. Additionally, for A's, the treatment for APL is going to be all transretinoic acid, which is vitamin A, and also arsenic. So those are all the A's. Some bonus info is that patients with APL, if left untreated, are going to have increased risk of DIC. So all important stuff to know, but if you think of the M and the three A's, it's going to be all the general associations for APL. Next off for the lymphomas, and first with mantle cell lymphoma, we're gonna be using the man, the first three letters of the word mantle for a lot of these mnemonics. So man, not only is it three letters, which primes us for the difference number, but those same three letters are gonna remind us that males are gonna have much greater incidence than females, as for all lymphomas, but this is something that first aid thought would be useful to point out. Uh, additionally, if we think of man, you know, we all take anatomy, they all have one D, which should prime us to think of cyclin D1, which is the protein that gets overproduced due to this chromosomal translocation. So for follicular lymphoma, once more, we're gonna be using the four follicular, as in the four for the difference of 14 and 18. We're gonna think of four lickel to bickel. A little bit of a wacky phrase here, but four lickel follicular lymphoma is gonna be associated with to bickel, as in BCL2, as the protein associated with the 1418 translocation with follicular lymphoma. Next onto Burkitt's lymphoma, I like to think about Michael Burry, one of the main characters in the movie The Big Short about the 2008 financial crisis slash the housing market crisis. Michael Burry is one of the first people to predict that the housing market was going to crash in the movie The Big Short, and he shorted the housing market. So Burry is, of course, for Burkitt's lymphoma. Michael is going to be that in Burkitt's lymphoma, there is an elevation of CMYC or C Mike. And additionally, the phrase big short, we're going to be thinking about this in two parts. So one of the classic presentations of Burkitt's lymphoma, specifically in the African subtype, is going to involve some kid with a large mass on their jaw, generally after a infection with Epstein-Barr virus. Now, this isn't the only presentation of Burkitt's lymphoma. There is a U.S. or Western Europe presentation where people are more likely to have abdominal distension and pre- and post-aortic lymph enlargement. But specifically, the large mass on the jaw of a kid is to help us remember that Burkitt's lymphoma is the most aggressive lymphoma. And in the tabular form that I've written it out here, it actually alternates between aggressive lymphomas and more indolent lymphomas. 
So once we know that Fergus lymphoma is aggressive, we therefore know that follicular lymphoma is more indolent, mantle cell lymphoma is more aggressive, and marginal zone lymphoma is also more indolent. So that's another benefit of the tabular form that I've set up here. So Michael Burry from The Big Short, Michael for C. Mike or C. M. Y. C. Burry for Burkitt's lymphoma, Big Short for a large mass on a kid or young adult. Lastly, for marginal zone lymphoma, we're going to think of the Georgia politician Marjorie Taylor Greene. She posts very inflammatory stuff on Twitter. So Marjorie for marginal and inflammatory because this is going to be associated with inflammation, a maltoma. And the three main inflammatory processes as outlined by Pathoma are that this can be associated with uh, H. pylori gastritis, Sjogren's with salivary gland inflammation, and Hashimoto's thyroiditis as the big three associations because this is a lymphoma that's resulting from other chronic inflammatory processes. And additionally, something to note is that marginal zone lymphoma might just go away if you are treating the underlying condition. In particular, the gastric maltoma form of this may regress if you're able to treat the H. pylori gastritis. Important stuff to know, Marjorie Taylor Greene posts inflammatory stuff on Twitter, Marjorie for marginal, inflammatory for chronic inflammation. One last thing to note is that all four of these lymphomas are going to be CD20 positive just because that is the marker expressed on B cells, and these are all B cell based lymphomas. And now for the last of our specific mnemonics, with the 1221 translocation, with the difference of nine, it's associated only with the BALL, but I'm also going to include some mnemonics that are able to distinguish BALL from TALL and mnemonics that cover both of these subtypes of ALL. So for both of these disorders, you can think of ALL being associated with Down syndrome with the phrase all falls down, so ALL and down for Down syndrome. And additionally, you know, how often do we need these kind of BS mnemonics to get through med school? Well, we need them all the damn time. So again, ALL and the damn time is for TDT positive on both ALL. Next, for the BALL specific mnemonics versus the TALL specific mnemonics, BALL is going to be associated with CD10, 19, and 20. 20 because it's a B cell based malignancy, and CD10 is specific to BALL and not TALL. So, one thing you can use to remember if you're using the ball mnemonic, you can think of football, the B10 or the Big 10 conference. So, Big 10, B10, CD10 is a marker for B cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. But then for TALL, Pathoma tells us that we should be looking for CD markers that are between 2 and 8, as in things that are all less than 10. So we can think of TALL for tiny versus BALL for big, as in TALL will involve CD markers that are below 10, CD2 through CD8, whereas BALL will involve 10, 19, 20. So that is everything for the acute lymphoblastic leukemias, but remember again, that is only BALL that is associated with the chromosomal translocation. So next is Ewing sarcoma. This is a quick and easy one, similar to how we can use 11 to match Ewing's to the number 11. We can think of onion Ewing's. Ewing's for Ewing sarcoma. Onion is going to be because the classic presentation of Ewing sarcoma is the phrase onion skin periosteum on x-ray. So onion rings, onion Ewing's, Ewing's sarcoma, onion, onion skin, periosteum on x-ray. And U11 because 22 minus 11 is 11. And lastly, for Philadelphia chromosome, we need to take a step back and realize that Philadelphia chromosome is actually associated with two ailments. One is going to be CML, which is going to be the most high yield reason to remember the Philadelphia chromosome. But something important to note that is covered in Pathoma is that Philadelphia chromosome is also associated with BALL. Particularly if you have a BALL that is associated with the Philadelphia chromosome, you're going to have a worse prognosis compared to the BALL up here that's associated with the T1221. This one's going to have a better prognosis. But with that distinction aside, the most high yield, high yield reason to know about the Philadelphia chromosome is going to be its association with CML, which is going to lead us to our mnemonic. This is a classic one for people who have watched my previous videos, but the baker's able to make caramel filling for fussy nibblers. 
Baker's Abel is because Philadelphia chromosomes associated with BCR, ABL, caramel is going to be for CML, filling is going to be for the Philadelphia chromosome, fussy is because it is the fusion of BCR and ABL, in particular it's a fusion kinase, and lastly the nibblers, we're supposed to think of nib for imatinib, the classic treatment for chronic myeloid leukemia. So that is the end of this video. I hope you all found it useful and thanks for watching. All right, so I was about to upload this video, but after re-watching the footage, I feel like I didn't sell well enough how useful this table can be if you understand all the mnemonics. So I'm gonna go and give a demo run through of just assembling everything in one go just to show y'all what I'm gonna be doing on my upcoming exams. So odd numbers one through 13, one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13. We're gonna add one here and then plus minus one here. New column. So two, three, four, six, seven, nine, 11, 13. So we don't care about any of this over here. So two, A, A, P, L. Three, four, six, and seven, men frolic to Burma. So men for mantle, frolic, follicular, Burma, burkets, marginal, B, A, L, L, Ewings, and lastly, Philadelphia. All right, APL, we're thinking of M, and then a bunch of A's. M3AML. So M, we're thinking of MPO, which is going to be with our rods. On histology, you treat it with all trans retinoic acid, which is vitamin A and arsenic. So with mantle, you're thinking of man, so males much more than females, which is the case for all lymphomas, but particularly for this. And then man, think of D, so D1, cyclin D1. Follicular, thinking of four lycular, but four lickle, two bickel, BCL2. Burkitts, you're thinking of Michael Burry from the big short. Michael, Mike, C-M-Y-C. Burkitt's lymphoma is, of course, going to be associated with Epstein-Barr virus. So a small kid with a huge jaw lump from a recent Epstein-Barr virus infection. And additionally, extremely aggressive, which makes us think that Burkitt's is really aggressive, follicular is more indolent, mantle's aggressive, and marginal is more indolent. And then marginal, Marjorie Taylor Green, inflammation. So it's going to be associated with H. pylori, Sjogren's, and Hashimoto's. B-A-L-L, you're going to think of B10, big 10. So it's going to be C, D, 10. Also, because all of these are B cell involved, they're all going to have C, D, 20 as well. And then for T cell, A-L-L, you're going to be having C, D, 2 through 8, the tiny. And then for both of them, you're thinking of all fall down, so Down syndrome, and then you need these mnemonics all the damn time. They're both gonna be PDT positive. For Ewing's sarcoma, you're thinking of onion rings. So onion, onion skin like periosteum. And then for Philadelphia chromosome, of course, BCR, ABL, CML, and also BALL with the worse prognosis. Whereas up here, it's better prognosis. And you're also thinking of the fusion kinase and then you treat with imatinib. Now I know it's easy to go through my mnemonic videos and just kind of roll your eyes at the weird mnemonics Hunter comes up with and it's just like, how does he, how does he remember any of this? Things like that, you know? Think about the Chad route of the tabular difference mnemonics for chromosomal translocations. Maybe not for the exam you're immediately cramming for, but think about learning it this way as a gift to future you for not next week and not the week after, but for like a year from now when we're all studying for STEP. Today, you might already know the difference between translocation of something like 1114, 1118, and 1122. You might know all these today, but think about how nice it'll be for future you if instead of seeing an Anki card about one of these random translocations and being like, I can't believe I have to relearn this BS thing, literally just gibberish, that's extremely hard to motivate, probably not even related to a disease that would be relevant to your specialty. You know, think back to these moments and be thankful that you learned it, the difference tabular Chad way. So good luck with studying. I wish you all the best and We'll all get through this together. <laughs>